Note the uh, time is now 6.46. Uh, welcome to our CIC Board of Directors meeting for September the 21st, 2021. Roll call, uh, Mr. James. Here. Mr. Weedman. Present. And let the record show that Mr. Porter is absent tonight. Mr. Warwick. Here. First on the agenda, the approval of the June 1st, 2021 Board of Directors meeting. Minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Executive Director up next with uh, his report. Mr. Warwick. We need to vote. We got to call, call, the, call wait, the roll. Wait, we have to approve it. We have to call the roll minutes. Motion? We already have a motion and a second. We just need a roll call. Okay. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Executive Director's report, Mr. Warwick. Okay. The uh, <laughs> The Board of Sycamore Township uh, funded the uh, CIC Corp uh, earlier this year with $100,000. Purpose is to cover the grants that are issued uh, to people who work in the JED and live in the township. And to date, $78,608.66 has been spent, uh, leaving us a uh, uh, an amount left over of $21,391.34. Since that should be adequate at this point to cover the rest of the calendar year. Uh, uh, related to the grants, um, an item has come up that I wasn't really aware of that we have historically restricted the, uh, uh, the applica application of a grant to three years. You could go back three years if somebody came in and hadn't been doing it. And we had a resident asked to go back six years and uh, they were told that no we we um, we only allow going back three years and the resident said well where is that written and uh, we looked at documents and the resolutions and I can't find it written anywhere that we would officially restrict it to three years which which says which, which um uh, where's this at which jets you know I don't know um, because I think I believe when we adopted it we adopted um, the uh, whatever whatever community was our partner on each jets I believe we adopted their rules and I believe they were all three years if I'm not mistaken I know Amberley's three years for sure um, but we'll have to go back and look at that again because I believe that's what we adopted that as part of it it wasn't that we set the rule of three years. I think that their their tax um, code said three years, but we'll have to double check. That. So the what you're saying then the Jed contract should reference that That's, we're using the I rules. believe it does, but you'll have to double check that because it's been a while since we did that. Okay. Okay. In the event that it doesn't reflect that, then we ought to have some documentation that. Reflects what we want to do three years, six years, 20 years, or whatever. So when we research that, then come back and we'll get. Right. I think it's pretty consistent around Hamlin County that three years is the max. But, but we need to make sure the CIC is That's set correct. up in such a way that we don't have rules that conflict with that or that seem to expand upon that either because. It, as I learned after the JEDS passed, it's not an automatic you get a refund if you're a resident and have paid taxes in the JED. The township still has to fund the CIC to make that happen, and it's a little more complicated than the automatic process it was sold as at the time. So we do want to make sure that the rules are consistent as to that. I suppose in looking at this, too, there's been concern about people possibly requesting refunds in municipalities where they've been paying taxes. I don't know if there's something we could put on the application for the CIC when people apply for the grant or some other requirement, but we certainly don't want to be in the position of having someone apply for a grant, getting it because they paid taxes in a JEDS, and then they go and request a refund of money they paid in because they weren't actually working there anymore in that geographic territory, double collecting. Um, so I don't know if that's something we could put on our form as an agreement or something we can require in some other way but that is something we should look at in the future too yeah we, we have more work to do on that first I'll check these jet contracts and then I hadn't even thought of that um, and then uh, we'll come back to the board and uh, 
um, with a suggestion on how to proceed. We, perhaps we also should uh, consider, I know we've done it from time to time, put it into our newsletter on a regular basis, explain that to the residents. Mm -hmm. We can do that. I have no other items. Okay, the date, any, any discussion or anything? Tom, Tom. All right, date of the next meeting will be December the 7th at 6.45 p.m. Motion, Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let the uh, record show the meeting ended. Our CIC Board of Directors meeting ended at 6.52.
I wouldn't think you're going to have to put pressure on the right away. I might think there's something on liability. Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let me read through that and talk to you about it in more detail. Elliot, are we good? All right, we are live. Good evening, everybody. It is just after 7 p.m. on Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. We are here for our 7 p.m. regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of Sycamore Township, Ohio. Uh, first of all, do we have an invocation from someone tonight? I do. All right, I'll ask everyone who's able to to please stand, and then we'll continue on with the Pledge of Allegiance afterward. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you tonight uh, that you touch the hearts of our elected leaders and remind them of their duty to govern according to your will. Romans chapter 13 verse 1 says that it acknowledges those who are in position of power and may have allowed there by God for a specific purpose. When we pray for them, we are praying that God's will be done. If our leaders do not have a biblical worldview, we can pray for their minds to align with God's word. In chapter 13 of Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, he said in part, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those authorities that exist have been instituted by God. We pray, dear Lord, that our leaders gain renewed understanding of their role in the instituted governments of your kingdom. And lastly, God, thank you for the men and women who serve our country, our state, our county, our township in these leadership roles. Please provide our leaders with reminders each day of why they decided to dedicate their lives to public service and use that commitment to encourage them to serve as your teachings instruct. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Mr. Ward. We'll continue on with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. You may be seated if you're standing. All right. I'll note for the record, Mr. Reporter, our fiscal officer, is not here this evening. He is spending some time with family. And so I'll ask uh, Mr. Warwick if you'll call the roll, please. Mr. Weedman. Present. Mr. James. Here. Mr. Barbara. Here. First thing on the agenda here uh, is approval of minutes from our September 7th, 2021 public hearing and then from our trustee meeting. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. And there is a second. And is that as to the public hearing or as to both sets? Oh, that is to both. All right, as to both, and second is as to both. Any discussion as to either set of minutes? Hearing none, will you call the roll, please, Mr. Ward? Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. All right, next we have public comments on the agenda. <laughs> Mr. Miller, do we have anyone signed up for that? Uh, let me, I do know we have people here to speak. I don't have the list in front of me, one second. All right. And Mr. J. Janis. Speaking. Ready, sir. All right, as Mr. Janice approaches, I'll just note that public comments are time where the public may make res respectful comments. Um, here, you've got four minutes in which to do it, and this is not necessarily a Q&A session. Uh, the Board of Trustees or others up here may choose to answer questions that someone has now or later if they're able, uh, but we encourage you to uh, let us know what you think, certainly, because we work for the public. So, Mr. Janice, if you'll state your name and proceed. Jay Janice, Jr., 4462 Daffodil Avenue, Sycamore Township, Ohio. Um, I'd like some clarification in the past um, it's my understanding that the township had an arrangement with one or two towing companies if their motor vehicles were left abandoned, junkers, if you will, flat tires in the right-of-way in the township, the, I guess, zoning department could contact them. They would come up, remove the vehicles at their own expense, and take care of any follow-up administrative work. I'm not sure if that was under the former administration, the current administration, but I'd like some updates on that. Um, the library has contacted some citizens and there was some discussion about having their staff available to go in the parks to make uh, programs and presentations. 
and I touched base, some of us touched base with the administration. There are some issues about insurance and liabilities. I'd like to know some updates on that. I'd like to know the next, what I call truncated domes and curb cuts. For example, at the sheriff's office here in the township building, two buildings down, the fire department, what I would call their side entrance, which is basically the public entrance, and the entrance to the um, community room at the north side fire station. I'd like to know, apparently the summer's over on that. Doesn't look any of that's gonna happen. I just wanna know where the township was on that for the future. Um, a couple meetings ago, one of the department heads here within the sound of my voice commented about extensive vandalism at Bechtold Park. Is a member of the Parks Advisory Committee and is a public records advocate. I procured the records. These are public records from the Hamilton County Communications Center which is a summary of the Sycamore Township uh, police details by the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. I have here the August 21st month, or the month for August 21st, for July 21st. Two minutes. There's not a single incident of any reported um, vandalism or theft at Bechtel Park. At the past, at the um, Township Parks Advisory Committee, Jason Petty, the Park Supervisor, mentioned extensive van um, vandalism at McDaniel Park to the restrooms. This is before the current, sad to say, craze TikTok about younger people vandalizing public property. So I guess I'm curious because it's my understanding when someone wants to file an insurance claim, a law enforcement report would be needed. Again, there is no incident, no record of any of that ever happening in McDaniel Park. Um, in the past, the Parks Director McEwen had publicly stated at a trustee meeting there is extensive vandalism at the High Point Park, the Township Park and High Point community. Again, in reviewing these types of records for over a year, there's not a single call for service to the Sheriff's Department to the to High Point Park. So in my personal opinion, um, all of that is unfounded. Um, I just wanted to comment on the um, parks, movies in the parks, and concerts in the parks, because I'm a frequent patron of both those. Trustees Weedman, James, and LaBarber have made appearances at uh, many of those. I think, again, as we're winding down, for my, there's still people in attendance. The most recent one at uh, McDaniel with the movie, or excuse me, at Bechtel with, with the movies. Um, it was, my opinion, well attended. I viewed young families with children having a great time playing, older citizens and so forth, so I hope that can continue on in 2021. And I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Janis. Uh, I, I, I guess I do have a question. Some of these things others may want to address later, but the Bechtel Park vandalism um, is something he asked about. Tracy, did, why don't we make police reports as to those things? What's going on with that? Well, we have made, I mean, we made 911 call when, uh, Chief, do you receive a 911 call, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, I figured yeah. 911 call everybody goes to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was when the fire was. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bath, the last time that I witnessed it was when they destroyed the picnic tables under the super shelter. And we definitely made a police report on that one and contacted the schools and found out who they were also. Mm -hmm. So I'll check and on the uh, more recent ones. Okay. Let's see what's going on with that. When there's an incident such as uh, graffiti on the backside of the old maintenance barn there, is that something we call the police about or do we just take care of it? We'll just take care of that. Okay. Some of those instances too, if you just face to face with a policeman and tell them to go up and do a report, it might not necessarily come up on the 911 through the dispatch center, yeah. but what, if there wasn't a call that came in mm -hmm. and a dispatch that went out, they, would, they wouldn't really have that. Right. Good point. All right. Okay, sir. Mr. Janice, you have a, a police report file. You just put your, that you were waving that around. Yes. And you get that on a monthly basis? Yes, these are available to anybody. The Hamilton County Communications Center prints them off. And typically, I try this first week in the new mm -hmm. month to make a public records request of it. Mm -hmm. And these are available to anyone and list, you know, the date of the call, the incident, yeah. the signal, the description, the address, location, who was assigned, um, when they arrived, what the disposition was, when they departed. I think it's well, very we, important yeah. information. 
Can we check into that? We used to get those reports. I, I don't get them anymore. It used to be a monthly report that I got from the Sheriff's Department. I don't get that anymore. I'll check with Lieutenant Tarr. We, we used to get them weekly. They changed the, uh, the report format. We just got the first set of them. Uh, and so we'll send them out again. I didn't know who, okay. It, okay. <coughs> who was sending what to who. But uh, we were, the, we had a gap of a couple of months, but now they've gone back with the new format and picked it up. Thanks very much. Okay, yeah, please distribute those. All right, do we have others signed up for public um, comments? Just, just quick response on the, the junk Sorry. vehicle. When when there's a junk vehicle on private property, uh, there's there there's a statute, 505, I think it's .87, uh, that, that allows for removal of junk vehicles. Um, that's a lengthy process that we pursue similar to a zoning uh, a zoning violation, but it's it's a statutory um, police power that the that the trustees have. Um, so when when there's actually a junk vehicle on the right of way, um, it's it's much more expedient to contact the sheriff's office, work through them to to remove that safety hazard from the roadway. Which is why we do not treat a junk vehicle on the in the right of way the same as we would. Um, one on private property, so it's it's not that we're ignoring uh, a junk vehicle in the right of way, or trying to kick that can. It's it's a matter of using all of our township resources to you know find the right tool for the right job and address it quickly. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Ms. Paula Gibbons. <coughs> Hi, uh, I'm Paula Gibbons. Um, we my address is um, Birmingham, Birmingham, Michigan. My business address, my uh, home address is 2055 East 335th Road, Goodson, Missouri. So I've, I've come a ways to um, open a discussion uh, about medical marijuana. I am a medical marijuana compliance attorney. Um, I, uh, I'm a former federal attorney, not a DOJ attorney. I prosecuted civil violations of federal law. Um, and as a non-user of cannabis, a lifelong non-user of cannabis who's been in the cannabis industry for seven years, and I now co-own a manufacturing facility in southern Missouri and some dispensaries in Michigan, um, I, I've had to come to medical cannabis, I think, in a way that, that new people often do, which is to to recognize um, uh, uh, two things really, uh, sort of changing values in society uh, and attitudes toward uh, cannabis and second to the medical utility of cannabis. Um, my, I, I do this for a living, I come to city council meetings and educate people. My favorite, uh, my favorite city council meeting it's actually my favorite and my least favorite in two respects. One is because it was the most moving experience I've ever felt. And second, it was be the city council was um, totally immune to it. And it was, uh, it was an older guy who uh, was clearly, clearly had mobility issues. And when I say older, I don't just mean our age. I mean older, uh, in his 80s. And he had with him a bag of uh, empty pill bottles. And he told the story, and it was moving to most of us, not in front of the bench, uh, about how he got off um, opioids and a ton of other medication through the use of medical cannabis. Um, and, and stories like that, for me, is, is what brought me to, to believe in it, to believe in it as real medicine. And in... In Ohio, as opposed to several other states, the Medical Marijuana Control Program, which is the name of the program here, and the law, um, it's, it's not one of these, go to a doctor, I have a boo-boo, I think medical cannabis fixes my boo-boo. Um, the Department of Pharmacy in, in Ohio actually administers the program for dispensaries in particular. And I'm here to advocate the the, the that you reconsider the resolution that you passed in 2017 when this issue first came before you. And when that issue came before you in 2017, a resolution was passed banning, uh, banning the location of any licensees here. And I, I, would, I would tell you that when I, when I first 
left my my biz my job with the federal government, I uh, moved to Colorado, and right around the corner from my house was a, a, a dispensary. And when we sold our property, um, it sold on day one uh, for cash above asking price. And I think that that for people thinking about this, that's that's one of the big questions. Wow, what's this going to do? What's this going to do to my property values? And I. I would tell you from my personal experience that um, that it did not detract from my property value. You know, the other thing that that's really a rational consideration um, is safety, safety and security. That's that's actually from a public official standpoint the most important. And I I, I would tell you that I think the experience of communities throughout Michigan, my throughout Ohio, my time's up, is is that the safety hazard that sometimes. That, that you worry about that the public fears just really hasn't come to fruition with these facilities and so you know I'd like to have you reconsider before your next meeting um, permitting medical marijuana dispensaries because you have many open properties that I think would be um, qualified otherwise Thank, thanks for your comments I, I am curious was there something that brought you to Sycamore Township in particular or are you visiting multiple jurisdictions in the area the the availability of the property in Sycamore Township is one. I think the um, the the community is another. This this community, you know, it, it looks just like where I raised my son. It it looks just like where I raised my son. It looks like where I lived in Colorado. It looks like I've, I've moved a lot for this, and it's a vi it's very familiar to me uh, economically business wise mm -hmm. that the types of business that you have and so that's that's why it's attractive thank you very much yeah thank you there, there's an upcoming licensing lottery is that correct that right th so that's that's why I'm here there's an upcoming licensing lottery the applications are due November 18th this is sort of this is sort of a you know if 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 if, if you're going to make a decision at least for this period of time the, the decision would be soon um, certainly, you know, by by the next meeting or at the next meeting, um, and who knows, you know, in the future what will come up. Certainly, certainly there will be other opportunities later to take your temperature too and make a decision then also. But yeah, thank thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, That's how many licenses are available across the state or or in the region. So, in in this particular region there will be nine additional licenses okay how large is that region I'm sorry it's Hamilton it's 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 the county oh, the county. Okay. it's it's the county and in in the the way that it works is, is is two things either the city has an affirmative ordinance you know with some of the zoning and you know zoning districts where you're willing to allow it or you can do it by a conditional use you can do it by a conditional use. We'll sort of figure it out later. The state requires for applications that uh, that the municipality at least acknowledge that it's a permitted use. So in a city with a ban, for instance, an active ban or one that hasn't been rescinded, that um, that document wouldn't be available and no one would apply. So nobody can force you to you know to have a dispensary in your community if it's not a decision that you make. All right. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else signed up first? Uh, yes. I Next a up. I'd oh. make a comment. We, when you're talking about this, uh, we may want to look at this economically. Uh, Columbia Township, a trustee there, tells me that they will get uh, in revenue of one million dollars for one year, and uh, of course, location would be uh, very, very important. But it's something that maybe we should take a look at in the future. In the future. How are they getting the revenue? Is that from a JEDD yeah. or so income tax revenue? Income tax. Interesting. Okay. Someone else. Uh, next up, Miss Gretchen Fortin. Miss Fortin. Our community and little our kids. Other families have sidewalks. 
why don't we? Does another safety matter also? We are especially scared to walk to our park. Cars go 50 miles an hour down the street. We have we have no crosswalk in there, and we would really like one. Thank you for your time and service. Thank you, Miss Fortin. Would you tell us how old you are, Miss Fortin? Thank you, you present yourself very well. Has anyone else signed up to speak? Uh, next up, Mr. Standish Fordon. Standish Fordon, 12137 Macaulay Road. Thank you for your service. First, I'd like to point out that Sycamore Township does have an investment policy statement. It has been on the books for well over a decade. Uh, hopefully the legal advisor uh, who is out of the room will remind our trustees that they have a fiduciary duty and they have been violating that for well over a decade. An example of violations of the investment policy statement is the township owning speculative real estate. The township has speculated in over $20 million currently is my estimate of real estate bought with our taxpayer money. If you analyze that from a portfolio approach, that would mean that the township has allocated 25% of its holdings into a speculative real estate venture. I don't have to remind any of you that actually follow the market as to what happened in the last two days. If we have another 2008, where is that going to leave the taxpayers? Along those lines, I have a submission from the administrator. I am making an offer on two properties that the township has owned for over a decade. They purchased houses, demolished them, purely on the speculation that it would be used possibly for political contributions to raise commercial real estate deals in the township. For over a decade, the township, we the taxpayers, have paid for our utility, our service people that Mr. Kellams manages to maintain those properties. In addition, the township is not receiving tax revenue. I don't know how many millions of dollars the township has lost on these speculative real estate deals. I'm glad to see that the master plan, zoning plan, is finally being worked out. Back in 2015, you may remember, we talked about it a lot, that the taxpayers spent over $100,000 on a contract for Jacobs Engineering to manage a master plan. What happened to that plan? Nothing. We've seen nothing. Taxpayers, taxpayers spent money on that and part of the discussion between the township officially documented and the contractor stated that public outreach will be minimal as per township request. This is documented. I would like a response by the only individual in a position that authorized that contract and that communication, which is uh, Trustee Wiedemann, as to why that administration felt developers could be incorporated but that township residents were to be kept at a minimum. I anticipated that. Unfortunately, I was unable to carry out my civic duty in carrying forth another 4th of July celebration, uh, which generated revenue for the township. I do have a check that I'll present to Mr. Porter when he is back. Uh, in the interim, I would hope that the revenue uh, received by elected officials in their campaigns from other events would be returned to the township residents in the form of a contribution to the Sycamore Township Cemetery Endowment Fund. Mr. Weedman, that should be about $40,000. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Fortin. Tom, did you have any comment as to his question no. about the question? Okay. I guess the only, I, the only I'll comment on is um, the, the property that we bought on uh, Montgomery Road, we, we spent $10.8 million for it. We purchased it specifically for um, excess management. We have had some uh, 
some uh, studies done. Uh, things have changed over the years since we acquired some of that property, and so uh, um, what we need is, and we had a charrette recently on that property done, so uh, we, we want to try to move forward. COVID kind of threw us a curveball on that property. But uh, I might just mention to Mr. Fortin that that property that we bought for 10.8 million was just appraised at 15.2 million. So the suggestion we've lost money on that property is uh, probably not uh, really true. But uh, beyond that, that's all I have for comments. Thanks. And I'll add that as Mr. Fortin knows, I was not a part of the board when those properties were purchased. And that's part of why I ran, because I didn't think the <coughs> township should have done that in the manner it did. But we own them now, so we need to use them in a responsible manner and do something that does maximize their value to the township. And that's why we did undertake this charrette process in the last year to try to find a use for it <coughs> so that we are no longer the government investing in private real estate, but rather the government making use of that and returning it to the private sector so that it can be profitable as tax revenue for the township. Did you have a question, Mr. Fortin, if you had a few seconds left, I guess, if you be very brief, though. Yeah. Um, update the investment policy statement. Well, in, in fact, the township did within the last year, although I doubt it included speculative real estate, but there was an update. <coughs> so, all right. Has someone else signed up to speak? Uh, one more, sir. We have Mr. Nathan Allen. Or, I'm sorry, Allie. Pardon right. me. Mr. Allie? Hi. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, my name is Nathan Alley. I live at 6150 Miami Road. I'm here for two completely separate reasons, but first I wanted to applaud Ms. Fortin for her words. Um, in my day job, I advocate for things like pedestrian infrastructure, and if you haven't already, I hope you end up uh, applying for some of the new Issue 7 money that sort of is dispersing uh, to folks in the county for things just like sidewalks in our communities. Um, but again, my name is Nathan Alley, and the first thing I wanted to do tonight was introduce myself as a candidate for the Board of Education in Indian Hill. Um, I myself have two uh, school children in the district. Actually, my girl just started kindergarten and my boy will be in kindergarten next year. I myself am an alumnus. I graduated in 1997, uh, right between two of Mr. LaBarbera's children. And I'm very proud to represent Indian Hill. I've lived all over the country. I myself have practiced as a public interest attorney. In my day job these days, I work primarily on matters related to sustainability. That's gonna be my second point. Excuse me, uh, my second point. But um, I was uh, interested in introducing myself tonight um, as a candidate and just to get to know everybody in the community. It's an important responsibility that we have guiding the education of our youth, and it's one that I take very seriously, and I would be honored to have the support of anybody in Sycamore Township. Um, transitioning wildly uh, back to my day job where I do help communities in things like sustainability and energy efficiency, I note that you have what I believe is a successful energy aggregation program. And I'm working with some folks in your neighboring town of Blue Ash who would very much like to avail themselves of a similar program. I live in Indian Hill. We have a very successful energy aggregation program there. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the city council in Blue Ash has been somewhat reluctant to take up the issue. Some might say they've received some interesting advice from, from interested parties, but if you ever, in your role as public officials, have opportunity to speak with your neighbors about this issue and explain the perhaps positive experiences you've had as a community, um, particularly when it comes to cost savings for energy, uh, that would be very much appreciated by um, the, in fact, hundreds of uh, people in Blue Ash that I represent. We were prepared at one point to take a voter initiative to the folks in Blue Ash COVID, as you say, threw us for a little bit of a curveball. We may yet do that, but we would love to work with the city council there. So I realize that's not exactly your purview. I came at you with two kind of random things tonight, but I very much appreciate your time and attention, and it was lovely to see you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming, and go Braves. Go so. Braves. <laughs> Anyone else signed up? Uh, no, sir, that's it. All right, thank you. Well. We will move on then. We have a presentation now from uh, several members of our community regarding the Kenwood and Orchard traffic control. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Jack Flume. I live at 7541 Hosbrook Road in Sycamore Township. And I'm here this evening to talk to you about the Kenwood Road corridor project which is uh, directed toward traffic safety, traffic flow, uh, land uses, and uh, other uh, related uh, aspects of a very important roadway within Sycamore Township. I'm with, uh, with me here this evening 
uh, is Greg Pancero. Uh, I think you, most of you know Greg. He, he runs a restaurant, I think, somewhere in the township. Uh, Glenn Hughes and his wife Tracy is here, and, Mar and uh, Mark Rippey is here as well. And the reason they're here is because this project, this isn't the first time that we've talked about this project. Uh, however, we do hope that it's an important milestone that will allow us to, to move forward uh, with the project. Um, in 2020, February of 2020, uh, which is a long time ago, but, but it was intervened with by the coronavirus uh, issues. So, so time passed quickly on that matter. We started talking about this and developed a scope of work of tasks, very preliminary tasks for for addressing the problems on Kenwood Road uh, between basically Euclid and Montgomery Road. Um, time passed um, and we had several meetings, discussions. Uh, the most recent meeting between the township and representatives and business owners in, in the corridor was on June the 22nd. As Mark pointed out when he walked in this morning, that was just about three months ago, almost exactly. And at that <coughs> meeting, um, again, we met with representatives of the township, and there was an agreement that we would move forward on, on the project. The project included all private properties, the corridor project included all private properties between Euclid to the south and Galbraith Road to, to the north. Um, and that's a very, and as you all know, that's a very busy corridor and very vital to the economic, uh, uh, the economic issues and and, uh, and activity in in the township. So so we're here to ask you this evening uh, for the trustees to pass a motion to allow us to begin to move forward in a, in, in real time and and hit and hit the start button as it were so that we can proceed with this quarter study. Let me talk a little bit about the study. Um, the, um, the, there are two major elements in the quarter, uh, and, and I'm going to only talk about those two because they are probably the most critical ones and probably the ones that are most critical to the success of the quarter study. And that is the, uh, the section of Kenwood Road and the, in, the, the signalized intersection that serves St. Vincent Fair Church and Kenwood Square. Um, TEC Engineering was hired by the township some time ago to prepare a report to analyze that particular intersection, which became very, very problematic in, in its operation when the median was put in, in, in on Kenwood Road and the elimination of the left turns and access to the, to the businesses of the Strip Center. Um, TEC, in their letter, in June of, of 2021, so just a few months ago, concluded that it was feasible and made sense to construct what they called in their report a mini roundabout. Now I know in your mind's eye everybody knows what, what's there and, and that the roundabout would be constructed in a fashion that would allow access to properties along Kenwood Road and, and prove the existing lack of access so that the properties could be used in an economically uh, viable manner. Uh, that report is of record. Um, it needs to be updated uh, as we move forward, and that's one of the tasks that needs to be done, is to take the TEC report and, and update it with, with more current information. The second critical uh, node, or cri second critical part of the corridor is the, is the intersection of Orchard Lane and Kenwood Road. And again, we all, we've all been there. We've all driven through there any number of times. And I think most of us probably know what the problems are and probably have <coughs> had some thoughts about how to solve it. And it won't be easy, but it can be solved. Uh, the slide uh, on, the, uh, on the screen there shows that intersection, Orchard Lane coming in from the left and uh, Kenwood Road going northward uh, to the top of the slide. And there are several, there are several uh, rather simple solutions to the problem at Kenwood. Now I say that uh, with full realization that as soon as we look at it in a larger sense in a corridor that it gets a little bit more complicated. But that's the reason for the, cor for the uh, corridor study. Uh, we have talked with the county engineer. As we all know Kenwood Road doesn't belong to the township. It belongs jurisdictional authority goes to the county engineer. So he's got to be part of the equation and he is. Uh, Eric Beck uh, is the new county engineer, 
He's aware of this. They reviewed, the county engineer's office actually reviewed the first scope of work that was prepared. Uh, the, the, a new scope of work, an updated scope of work will need to be put together and for, for um, review by the county engineer. And that can be done in, in a reasonable fashion and, and will be done in order to, in order to move this forward. Um, it's not a complicated project, and I, and I say that realizing that there are complications concerned with private properties, access, driveways, signal, signalization, safety, and of course the intersection of Montgomery and Kenwood Road has dual, has dual jurisdiction. Uh, ODOT is responsible for Montgomery Road, the county engineer is responsible for Kenwood. You say that's a problem, it's not. It occurs all over the county, all over the state as a matter of fact, where you have, where you have dual jurisdictions in instances like that. So I think we know how to deal with it. I think we know how to deal with that and, and, we, can, and we can move forward. Um, what I'd like to do is, is to ask uh, uh, Greg Pancero, who, who, who does have an interest in this particular intersection, if, if Greg would like to say a few words. Yeah, Greg Pansero, 8450 Cal. Greg, would you mind coming over to the microphone so we get you for the video? Thank you. Hi. Greg Pansero, 8450 Keller, and then our business at 7565 Kenwood Road. Uh, thanks for hearing our proposal tonight. Uh, uh, with the intersection there of uh, Kenwood and Orchard from the time Jim had his video store there to the time that I've operated the restaurant, uh, everybody said we got a turn lane there why can't we get an arrow, a timed arrow to go in there? And we kept looking at it, and uh, at the same time, I think Tom had mentioned there was concern that uh, that light might back up Orchard Lane, uh, oh, uh, Montgomery Road light. So the thought is to put a continuous lane on the side towards Nordstrom, where uh, anybody coming uh, obviously up Kenwood Road over Montgomery could uh, continue to go on, get that flow, they get used to it, it will also help, I think, in front of uh, Mark's property, uh, help the, uh, the flow there to get it through uh, Kenwood Road, maybe better access for ambulances and what have you for the hospital. At the same time, the turn lane is already in there to turn left onto Orchard Lane. We have a light there that signals. Another problem with that intersection is a lot of people, it's everywhere, they're running red lights. And I know Madeira put uh, down there where they have that crosswalk, but they have yellow lights blinking when it's about ready to turn red, I think coming up from the hospital that side, it would really be beneficial to have those yellow lights before that light goes red. Uh, I spoke to a lot of the residents over the years, and uh, they are, would really welcome that uh, uh, arrow, all those back to come back, Frolic Star, all the different streets back through there. Also, with uh, Orchard going all the way to uh, Blue Ash Road, a lot of people exit the highway and then at, uh, going home time around four or five, they want to use a work orchard lane to go down to Blue Ash. So I think that would enhance it. I don't. There's not any property that has to be taken, uh, and I think uh, we, we look forward to hopefully uh, get a resolution that you would support that. Uh, we could go down the county and uh, see that when you have your study, that this is included in the study. So, any questions or anything? Thank you. Thanks. Okay, the, um, the city, of course, is more than just about businesses. It's about our community uh, as well. Uh, Glenn Hughes and, and Tracy have been circulating a petition. Uh, we're in the process of doing that, getting signatures of the residences in the, in, to the east of Kenwood Road in that area, uh, uh, back in there. And uh, they're, they're, they are as well familiar with the, with the problems at that particular intersection as, as anybody else. Uh, Tracy, do you want to? We, we, we have the petition. Um, if it's agreeable with everybody, we're not going to submit the petition at this time because it is in the process, but I think Tracy can, can identify those that uh, have signed sure. so far. Okay. Um, Tracy Hughes, 4705 Dunning Avenue. Uh, I have lived in Holiday Acres for 30 years, so I have a lot of experience with that intersection at Orchard and Kenwood Road. It is getting worse all the time. I will tell you, because I, that's how I have to get out now to go to work, um, at least once a week, I see someone run that red light. 
um, people do not honor that do not block intersection or the one lane will block it the other lane won't and they're waving you to to turn left and you almost get hit that way it it is really bad um, for years for 25 years I rode the bus downtown got off at Nordstrom and I can tell you how many times I've almost gotten hit in the intersection by people there that then it's something needs to be done with the signals there it, it's it really um, and then when you add the apartments those apartments are going to be leased in March next year that's 300 units they're not all going to go south on Kenwood but a, a large part well there's going to be more traffic so we need you know the arrow would be really appropriate there but our petition we just started this because I didn't know we were doing this tonight we just started this last maybe Thursday or Friday. We have 35 signatures without going door to door. Um, I don't know if people really appreciate going door to door, but anyone we ask in our neighborhood, happy to sign this to get the turn signal. So, okay. anything else? Okay, thanks Tracy. Thanks Tracy. Um, what are the next steps? Uh, and I think that's worthwhile uh, talking about this evening because we are asking that you take, take action this evening if it's appropriate, if it's consistent with the, with the Board of Trustees' thoughts on this matter. Uh, first thing we need to do in order to move forward is to update the work that was done, was done previously over the last 18 months or 20 months and, and update that and make it, make it more current um, uh, according to the circumstances today. Um, the second thing that we need to do then is to have that scope of work reviewed and approved or modified by the county engineer. He'd be very upset if we went ahead and didn't let him know we were doing something on Kenwood Road. Uh, I'm going to be talking with Eric Beck, who is the new county engineer, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and, and I, I would really be happy if I could tell him that we were successful this evening in getting the support of, of the trustees on, on this matter. Uh, the third item, of course, then falls in, in Mr. Warwick's uh, um, area, the administration of the contract, the selection of consultants. consultants. A consultant will need to be hired. It's a fairly technical study requiring uh, good expertise and good knowledge of traffic flow, traffic modeling, trip generation, and a lot of the things that are happening in, in the corridor, um, not the least of which will be land use changes Kenwood Place, for example, is, is transitioning to different uses. Um, the, uh, the businesses along the, where the median is constructed uh, will, be, will be changing as well, I think. So a lot of that information will have to be put together into a report that's credible and meets the standards of the county engineer and of ODOT. Uh, ODOT is, is another party in this since they have jurisdiction uh, for Montgomery Road. Then after the consultant selection, then we go to work, and uh, um, there'll be surveys that'll be done, uh, analysis that'll be taken, um, progress reports, all of which will be included in the scope of work. And uh, Mr. Warwick, we did have a, a scope of work, a draft scope of work. I'll take a look at that again and try to update it before before we send it to you for your consideration. So those are the next steps. Um, not sure how the motion would should be worded. Uh, that's somebody else's job, I guess, at this point in time. But we would appreciate um, moving forward on it if you could if you could take action this evening because we've been at it for almost two years now, and um, I think maybe things are coming back to normal, whatever normal is, the new normal, I, I guess. And uh, we want to be there if we if we can complete the study and complete the improvements in a timely fashion, well then we'll be ready and be able to serve the citizens of, of, of Sycamore Township. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Comments, thoughts from anyone? I'd like Tracy? to, yeah, uh, at our last meeting that we were all in, we were in with Mr. LaBarbera, you asked us to move forward at that time. This was not included in that, this is something new. Uh, so that scope that you had put together, we've already looked at, we have updated. It's already been sent to the county engineer. He, uh, Jeff Newby, the traffic engineer, has reviewed it, uh, sent back some comments, and he has forwarded it on to ODOT. So uh, you asked us to move forward at that time, and that's what we've done. So uh, if you want us to go back 
and uh, changes. And when you sent this to us, this has always also been forwarded to Mr. Newby already. So he is reviewing that yeah. at the present time also. I understand that. We, we, we do want to include that because it's an important part of the quarter, correct? Yes, so Mr. Newby knows that. So, so we got ODOT involved too because with the, uh, the property on Montgomery Road that's going to be uh, developed, you know, we want to include Montgomery Road and Kenwood in, in this study. So uh, that's why ODOT has it now. So we have moved forward with this as do you they, requested at that do last they have meeting. The old, do they have the old scope of work or do they have the one that includes Orchard Lane? They do not have no, this no, one. They if do this not is the one you're talking about. The yeah. county has this. Yeah. Mr. Newby's looking at this now. It was forwarded to him the day that, uh, the first day that I saw it. Yeah, ODOT will need to have, have that because, well, as we well know, the situation at the signalized intersection of Montgomery and Kenwood cascades. Oh, yeah, we all well know it's a problem yeah. for sure. Yeah. So we are moving forward with this already, and, uh, and Mr. Newby is going to uh, give us comments on this and forward it to ODOT also. Yeah, I was not aware that you had sent this to ODOT. Well, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we need a motion to formalize any of this, nonetheless, if we I want to include this? I don't think we need a motion until we get the comments back. I mean, that would be up to you, gentlemen, but until we get the comments back, if it's already in ODOT, progress, then we're already in yeah, progress. It's already being considered. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to hear what the county engineer has to say. Yes, but I mean, we've had this problem along the corridor for a long time, and and I'm totally convinced we've got to do something pretty pretty major to make things work there. And so, I, I mean, I'm I'm in support of studying the thing to try to determine how we make it work because it's a it's a problem. It's been a problem a long time. So Tracy, yeah. are you are you managing this for the for the township? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> could I send uh, could I send you an updated draft then? Because um, right right now ODOT doesn't have the updated scope of work. Yeah, or, that would be fine. And then and then Jeff and Eric Beck would probably like to have a full package to to look at. Sure. So within the next couple of days, I, I'll send you a. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. An updated, an updated uh, draft. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, it sounds like we don't need a motion to formalize this, but it sounds like it's also the consensus of the board that we support moving ahead with this, and that we want Mr. Well, yeah, I to think do it, I so. think that is from from the viewpoint of um, of, of, of the business people along there, along the corridor, as long as it's getting beginning to move forward and, and frankly we weren't aware of the steps that have been taken and we appreciate the fact that they have been taken Tracy that you've done that and uh, so I think at this point in time I'm satisfied I don't think that we need a motion if, if, if you're beginning to move forward on it um, so right. that's that's good any comments to add from anyone else who was here as part of this presentation mm -hmm. okay all right, we will be moving let forward. Go let me forward. just say one other thing. I, I mean, to Tracy Hughes's point, this is a safety issue here. It's yeah. been a safety issue a long time. We we got to figure out how to make it work because yeah. it's it's a serious problem out there. So uh, I'm totally in support of of, uh, of doing the study and trying to figure out what kind of solutions we can find. Okay, Tracy, I'm going to be so, as I indicated, I was going to be talking with uh, Earl, with uh, uh, Eric Beck tomorrow, okay. and I'll just I'll just reinforce that. Uh, about our discussion here today and the fact that you've got that in process with Jeff. Sure. And, and let him know it's clearly the consensus of the board that we want the county moving as quickly as it can on this. Well, I can't speak for the board, maybe officially, but maybe unofficially. I can <laughs> say we, we were well received yeah. this evening. I can yes. say That's something fair. like yeah. that. Yeah. That'll work. Looks good, Jack. Looks good. Yeah. And thank you all for your work on this. Uh, Tracy, yes. While we're looking at all this, because Happiness Way is closed, we don't think we're going to reopen it. Whatever. I mean, it is more important. We're, there's a lot more traffic on there. Yeah, that, that is a good point. And you weren't at the microphone, but you were noting Happiness Way is not open right now, and that's added right. to the traffic. We, so. And we don't know if yeah. it will open once we see what happens with the apartments and all that. Um, mm. A lot more traffic. So. Right. Very good. All right. Thank you all. Thanks for spending all the time on this, too. So, All right. Uh, with that, we will move on to the Sheriff's Patrol report. I have nothing to report, sir.
Very good. <laughs> we like That's those reports. Often good to hear from a law enforcement <laughs> perspective. <laughs> I, I, I will ask because this this has come up uh, just in the last few days in some of the neighborhoods in the area here. There's been some suspicious overnight traffic in uh, Sturbridge and some other neighborhoods, some break-ins into cars which were unfortunately unlocked. Lock your cars, people, please. But uh, from what I understand, residents have reported that to the sheriff's office. And yes, sir. There are a lot of people with doorbell cameras and other things there who are happy to cooperate, I think, in the investigation if you need it. Yes, sir. So, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on next to EMS and fire report. Chief, what do you have for us? Good evening. Uh, a lot of the materials for the kitchen project for the North Station have been ordered. We're waiting for them to come in. The electrical work has been scheduled to start on that. Um, we I signed all the paperwork for the alarm system for the installation of that and for the monitoring. For, so both stations will be monitored uh, from an alarm company. So um, uh, we do now have a, an, a working sprinkler system. We got the fire department connection installed last Thursday, and thanks to Tracy's crew, they did most. They did all the digging and uh, got all the got the, everything exposed. So the only thing I had to do was hook the pipe up and route it out, and then they filled backfilled it. So a lot of the work was done by the township maintenance. Great. Um, so so we we do have. A working sprinkler system as it stands now um, the only other thing is um, candy for Halloween are you guys still in favor of wanting to go out with the trucks and do the candy yeah. so yeah. I'll, I'll work on getting getting that for us and the police department Good. yeah please do kids love that in the neighborhoods That's I have I have nothing I have nothing to report on vaccine boosters because I got a <laughs> email from uh, the uh, public health department today said they are waiting for direction from the state on what to do and they're hoping to hear in the next couple days so maybe by the next meeting we'll have some something solid to, we can figure out what's going on that's all I got all right a couple questions for me mr. Janice had asked about this about the uh, curb cuts and truncated domes for the side entrance which is the main entrance really to the fire station here have we made any progress on that for wheelchair and you know surface level access? we have not um tracy and i need to get together and figure out if we're going to do that in in-house or have it farmed out if we have it farmed out it'll take forever but um uh, especially after working in the last two months with contractors on the buildings mm -hmm. it's just impossible to get uh, things done but we'll, we'll talk it out and figure out okay what we can do with that great all right um, and I had something else in mind and I've suddenly gone blank uh, <laughs> I, I know what it is this is something I've talked to mr. Warwick about and it's something that you'll have an interest in too and it relates to COVID in part and other things but um, I understand FEMA has a lot of money available they're making available through the county and other things continuously for reimbursement of COVID relief expenses and remediation things like that um, something I, I think we should consider doing as a township is upgrading our ventilation in our public buildings to ensure we have HEPA or MERV 13 or greater quality filtration because mm -hmm. that really mitigates viral spread for COVID, for flu, and for everything else. There's money available from the federal government to pay for that. Um, if you guys can get your heads together and with Tracy also and let's do that let's make sure in this room where we have members of the public coming in to meet and many people gathering and for our workers in the firehouses and the maintenance building in the Shuler room up north and any other enclosed spaces we might have let's take advantage of this opportunity we have to do it I think by the end of the year possibly is it for the this money year? maybe it's next year it might be next year. Might be twenty. Yeah, it might be twenty twenty two. But but, but yeah. it it's good timing because we are in the process now of doing the whole HVAC at the North Station. So right. we can always in, in, include that in. Yeah, let, let's incorporate that ASHRAE, which I'm going to fail if I try to remember exactly what it stands for. But it's the American Society of what Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. Maybe they have a set of standards for buildings for upgrading the systems like this that we should look at and it includes the ability to pipe in outside air a little more than systems have done the last 20 or 30 years and even to flush air in and out of buildings when there are going to be large gatherings um, okay. so 
Yeah, we, we definitely. I, I did see something from FEMA about that mm -hmm. uh, a while back. There was they were kind of throwing some guidelines out of what to yeah. if you could qualify for it and things like that. So yeah. I'll take a look at it. So thanks. All right. Any other questions for the chief from anybody? Yeah, Trio has upgraded their system. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Greg's gone now, or you could ask him. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks, Chief. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to roads maintenance and recreation, Tracy. Uh, I don't really have anything for recreation tonight. Mr. Jans reported that we had we had the movie uh, this past weekend, uh, so I believe we have uh, we have one more concert for the year coming up, and that'll do it for our events this year. Uh, moving on to roads, Coogan Mill is moving forward. Uh, we are on time right now. Uh, this weather has definitely held us back. We were supposed to be getting ready to pour concrete next week. Uh, curbs are all in. Uh, that has the weather has slowed us down, but uh, hopefully uh, it'll dry up and we and we can get back at it. Uh, we have not gotten official notification yet, but on the sort of grant in there. Uh, on the news and if you go to this the sort of website uh, the Montgomery Road sidewalk project from Euclid to Stewart was the second rated mm -hmm. project only behind the Western Hills viaduct which is never going to be beat with the condition <laughs> that thing's in so uh, we're still waiting for uh, it still has to go to, the, to uh, be awarded but the sort of uh, group is going to recommend that it be yeah. approved so yeah. that that is a 50 percent grant that's so fantastic. that grant will be yeah. about six hundred five thousand. that's great so yeah that, that'll get us so on did that. steve riddle show put that together or were you working on that yes or? we both worked on it all right well good work to both of you yeah. thanks steve does a good job on those grants and then also uh as you know there's a township stimulus program that is coming out i believe uh, you may have received something in your mailbox about that uh, we are putting in for a grant for that for uh, Gideon Road. Uh, we have a, a large culvert there that is completely washed out. Uh, the bottom is completely gone. There are some parameters on that. Uh, it can only be up to $250,000 project. There is no matching funds. It's 100% paid for. So the, you can only put in a, for a project up to 250, and that is one that we were looking to do with a. Uh, skip grant next year so if we can get it here that's even better because skip grants 50 percent so yeah. is, is there a cap on the number of projects that a township can uh, request funding for or total dollars or is it just 250 per project that we can request multiple i'll have to check on that from what i read the first time it was 250 for one project and you were limited to one project i believe really? i think that's what it is okay it, if not it looked like it provided sidewalk funding also um, as an option and other things. Not on new sidewalks. It can only be maintenance. Really? Yeah. Ah, okay. It can only be maintenance. Yeah. So, yeah, so it has to be within township limits, obviously, because it's only for townships. It's not cities, yeah. villages, county. So it has to be within the township. It has to be the maintenance responsibility of the township. And you can't need any right of way mm -hmm. or any, any environmental work or anything no. like that. Okay. So. So it kind of limits you to yeah. what you can do. Well, if we have any existing ones in need of upgrade, maybe that's a funding source if there's extra money available. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. What else have you got? Uh, not other than that, uh, you're going to have a PO tonight for uh, glue lamb erectors. This is for the wood to repair uh, Bechtel Park for the shelter that was burned up. So this is just uh, materials. We are purchasing the materials. Uh, because glue lamb is who we got the first one through we want to get that ordered and, and get that uh, to us so that when we select a contractor uh, we, we can get that work done still having a little trouble getting the insurance adjuster over there but I uh, put in a call today and I'm waiting to hear back from them so I will call again tomorrow all right and that's really all I have any questions for Tracy from anyone? Nope. And I thought I had one, but I'm not finding where I put it. So <laughs> you're off the hook. Good. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. So uh, planning and zoning then. Let's move on to Mr. Miller. Sure. 
Okay. Um, first item I'd like to bring up. Uh, this is uh, this is a request for uh, for a motion. Um, Scott Street Partners, uh, the, uh, the developer of record for uh, the villas of Kenwood, uh, our new subdivision on Coogler Mill, uh, that was uh, that was recently approved via uh, consent decree. Uh, they have went through the the county subdivision process, uh, and they have recorded uh, the villas of Kenwood as an official subdivision. Uh, here's the record plat, and uh, on this record plat. I'm going to zoom in on this <coughs> to show you. Uh, as part of that, as part of the both both the zoning and the uh, the subdivision process, there's there's new easements and uh, covenants that are uh, that are recorded. Uh, this is obviously a new configuration for this land. There were there were fewer parcels here, um, and uh, with that, we have to we have to clean up some of the old um, the old records on this site. Um, so now that this is recorded, uh, it's it's pretty standard that, that we terminate uh, any any pre-existing uh, covenants and easements. So the developer has forwarded us a, uh, a document uh, approving the termination of covenants uh, and grants of easement. Um, so I am requesting a, 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 a motion tonight pending um, full review and um, and approval by our special counsel, uh, Scott Solman. So okay. I'm happy to make the motion. Motion to it. Have you run this by the homeowners associations? This is in furtherance of the consent decree. This we is, already have yeah. as required. The, by this is it. this is not a deviation from the consent decree. No, 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 this no, no, is no. a standard development practice. Okay. Um, you know the the document still needs to be reviewed. Um, just to verify that all the easements are in fact for that for that property, and I've started that process, uh, but but our special counsel needs to review it as well. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize the termination of covenants and grants of easement easements related to the villas of Kenwood subdivision upon final review and appeal. Uh, uh, excuse me, an approval by special counsel Scott Solman. And I'll second that. I see the wording of that. And that's what Mr. Miller gave you, right? Okay. No. I'm going to move to amend that motion just to uh, uh, specify that this is the termination of the prior covenants and grants of easement, and grants of easement, as opposed to the newer ones required by the consent decree. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion as to that? <laughs> Like I'll just note, as, as Mr. Miller was discussing with Mr. LaBarber earlier, this is something that is uh, part of the plan the township put in place as part of the consent decree we have, which is bringing those houses to Coogler Mill Road to cement that roadway as residential, essentially, and, and keep it in place. There was a prior permanent, quote unquote, landscape buffer easement there before uh, that was serving that purpose with the prior houses there. That is going away, but being replaced by these houses and further easements behind it. Um, so this is all part of the plan previously agreed, which has been through public hearing and so forth. Any further discussion? Is any of this from anyone? All right. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. Okay. All right, uh, I'm, I'm going to apologize ahead of time here, but there we have uh, multiple resolutions for the same property. Um, just very briefly, the reason we're doing it this way is because there are multiple violations on the on the same property. Uh, enforcement, if if not voluntarily um, taken care of by by the uh, by the homeowner, is going to require different contractors. There's a whole billing process and. Um, you know, developing the liens, so it's, it's uh, it makes more sense administratively to handle this as as separate resolutions uh, for the time being. So, um, please bear with me as we as we go through these. Uh, but these all pertain to 4701 Cooler Mill Road. Uh, we have um, we have junk vehicles and uh, and equipment on the site. Uh, we also have. Um, High vegetation and weeds, and then we, 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 uh, um, as well as uh, vegetation even growing out of the covers, 
Uh, and then, then we also have the, uh, the overgrown bushes, honeysuckle, uh, tall weeds around the property. So all th these may end up being managed uh, by, again, by different contractors. So that's why we're going, uh, going through it this way. Uh, unknown occupancy uh, at this point in time. Uh, we're unable to verify if it's owner-occupied. Uh, we have sent letters and tried to, tried to reach out, and so far we have not had, had much success. So just get right into the to the pictures here. Uh, so we have uh, trailers uh, with uh, uh, with flat or no tires. These are it's sitting directly on the ground without any um, any pavement underneath. Uh, we have a dilapidated uh, front loader tractor uh, <coughs> and then a uh, what appears to be um, a late model uh, black Ford. Uh, vehicle that our zoning inspector has determined to be inoperable. So, do I have any questions on those pictures or the the violations? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, if no further questions, I'll start. I'll start reading these resolutions. A resolution providing for the removal of junk vehicles in Sycamore Township, Hamilton County, and the proper disposal storage or impoundment of motor vehicles by implementing the procedure set forth in Sycamore Township Resolution Number 2012-14 and Sections 505.173, 505.185, and 505.171 of the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, I'll make a motion, but I think you said 505.171, it's 871. 871. Oh, I'm sorry, my 871, thank you. I'll make a motion. Can we have a second? In any discussion let me just ask are are the descriptions of the vehicles on the second page adequate for the purpose of the resolution and we don't have so I, I mean I can tell you that is a that is a late mile Ford pickup either either late late 80s or 90s um, but without you know authority to go into the property mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't be able to provide uh, much else and the the plate there though no. that's on the trailer not on the truck Yes, and we have that is on the that is on the uh, um, trailer, uh, and we do the 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 pictures are uh, appended to the to the resolution. Okay. To document the to document the uh, right. vehicles and equipment. You, okay. And you don't know if anybody's living there. We haven't uh, we haven't seen any activity, and okay. I'll I'll show you I'll show you the house as we um, as we go on to the next resolution. Okay. I I just wanted to make sure that these are legally adequate descriptions for what we're going to do. If, if Mr. Desai is comfortable with it, then let's go ahead. I actually was working through something in my mind about what we just did before, and I do apologize that um, I wasn't listening to this particular question. You made a motion to amend Mr. Weedman's original motion, and that was seconded, and that was voted on. So the amendment was passed. But the underlying motion itself, as amended, is still pending. That's true. So okay. we need we need to vote on that motion. That's true. Okay. Then and since and so that motion takes precedence over anything we're doing right, right now. Well, let's let's do that right now then. As to that motion, would you call the roll, Mr. Warwick? Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Barbara. Aye. And just for context here, this was the motion concerning release of the prior easements. So. All right, now back to this resolution. Okay. So I'll, I'll start all over if you like. You don't need to no, start. No, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> your, your question is whether or not the pictures attached to the resolution are sufficient. In conjunction with the description here of pickup truck black and tractor for the uh, little dozer thing or whatever it is. If the pictures are incorporated within this, then that's about as specific as you can get really, I suppose, anyway. Can I see that language again, Skyler? Do you want the title or this? No, the, de the description. Okay. We can amend this to, to say late model Ford pickup. Is there another black pickup truck on the property? No, sir. Okay. Can I see the picture again, please? I'm fine with that. Okay. 
Yeah, the, the resolution itself doesn't actually specifically incorporate the pictures, though, as being a depiction of the vehicles, does it? Maybe I'm missing that, but. It doesn't, but if there's not another black pickup truck on the property, yeah. I would deem that to be a sufficient okay. description. Um, okay. I don't want to overthink this either. I just don't want us to be challenged over it later. Mm -hmm. So, okay. If it makes you feel more comfortable, we can incorporate the pictures. I mean, that's, that's not a problem. Just a motion to, um, to amend the resolution to reflect the pictures will be attached as Exhibit A. I'll make a motion to um, uh, amend the resolution to include the pictures. And is there a second? All right. Any discussion as to that? Mr. Work? Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. And now as to the resolution itself, then any further discussion at this point? No. Um, as, as a standard practice moving forward, we can attach them as Exhibit A and reference them. Yeah. yeah. In section. I prefer okay. to do that. We'll, 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 start, we'll start doing that. And I think everything you've done in the past has been fine, but it's sort of a belt and suspender. We, yeah. we can always improve. Continuous improvement. So I think this is good. Okay. Then as to the resolution, Mr. Work, call the roll. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarga? Aye. All right. Moving on. All right. Um, let me try and pull back on this. Uh, this is the uh, this is the residence where we are uh, discussing. Uh, this this resolution is specifically for uh, the the maintenance of the home. Uh, those those are actually weeds growing out of the gutter, um, and that would uh, one contractor would probably deal with this. Um, probably just a gutter service. Okay. Looks like the electrical service is cut off there. Uh, it does indeed. So that would question. certainly that would certainly lend credence to right? to a uh, vacant house. Okay. All right. So with that, I have a resolution uh, providing for and authorizing removal of vegetation, garbage, refuse, and other debris, and declaring a nuisance for the property located at 4701 Kugler Mill Road, Sycamore Township, Ohio, 45236. Motion to approve. <laughs> Who was first? <laughs> Tom always wants to be first. Can you second? I'll be second. All right. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Work. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. Okay. Uh, this is a picture of the, the property along Kugler Mill Road. Uh, this is actually the front of the house here. And you can see the um, uh, the front yard is uh, has been taken over by uh, honeysuckle, various uh, various other scrub brush and weeds. Okay, and with that, I have a resolution providing for an authorizing removal of vegetation, garbage, refuse, and other debris, and declaring a nuisance for the property located at 4701 Kugler Mill Road, Sycamore Township, Ohio, 45236. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Did you say who owned this house, Skyler? Uh, we do have the. Um, I don't have a I don't have the name in front of me, but we do have um, lien holder information and, and property owner information. We've sent we've sent those letters. Okay. Mr. Weebit? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. And Mr. LaBarbara? Aye. Okay. Uh, the only thing else I have tonight is uh, we had uh, although technically we had quorum uh, for a um, for a meeting earlier this month, uh, after speaking with uh, our chairperson, uh, Mr. Friedman, uh, it was decided that we should uh, we should wait until we have a, a either a full <coughs> board or at least a fuller board uh, for zoning commission to review the. Uh, uh, the zoning text amendments and more importantly the uh, the land use plan that meeting will be held um, next Thursday I believe uh, the third is that the 30th yep yeah, uh, the 30th uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, so we we did we are calling a special meeting of, of zoning commission uh, if they if they do move forward with a um, a recommendation to approve that'll be forwarded to uh, uh, the Board of Trustees on the same time schedule as as it would have before 
So hopefully no delay, but I'm hoping for a more thorough um, public hearing and, and review by by our commission. Okay. Can we make an extra effort to publicize that this is occurring, that it's a review of the land use plan? Yes, sir. Um, yep. And get that word out there mm -hmm. because a lot of people will probably be interested if they notice. Yep. And I think we did that. Yeah. I think we did that for our um, for our August meeting. Yeah. Push it out to Facebook, and we'll do that again. For your Thank timeline you. Timeline for the approval was when? Uh, so we're looking, we're looking for a possible recommendation for approval um, by by zoning commission at the end of this month, uh, which would give um, at least a first review and public hearing uh, by board of trustees in uh, in October. So um, I won't I won't promise that you'll want to you'll want to approve it the same night you see it, but uh, it, it will be in front of this board in October. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? That's all I have for tonight. Any questions for Mr. Miller? All right. Then uh, moving on to the law director report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everybody. Um, the township received three letters from the Hampton County Treasurer's Office. Uh, they were all dated in August, uh, at the end of August. Uh, they were alerting the township that we were receiving back uh, approximately $25,664.29 uh, for property taxes previously paid uh, that uh, my office had filed for exempt status on. Uh, those properties are 8622 Plainfield Road. Uh, the amount there was $1,479.67. 4316 Sycamore Road. One thousand four hundred eighty-four dollars and eighty-five cents, and then seventy-seven eighty-three Montgomery Road, twenty-two thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars and seventy-seven cents. So again, that's a total of approximately twenty-five thousand six hundred dollars that the township has received in refunds on those properties. That's pretty significant. Good. Anything else? That will do it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And we have an executive session later regarding pending and imminent litigation, correct? Okay. Uh, any questions for Mr. Desai from anyone? All right. Administrator report. Okay. First thing I have is uh, amending uh, 2021 appropriations. Uh, this has to do with uh, paying bonds. Uh, most The majority of the amount of the uh, appropriation asking three seven uh, of 375 529 48 cents has to do with the pass-through at the Kenwood co collection where we simply taken the money and send it on to the port more money came in than was originally budgeted and then we had a smaller amount of about thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars uh, for our general bond note we didn't have enough appropriated to uh, satisfy all that at year end so that's that's what's on there the resolution reads a resolution amending 2021 appropriations dispensing with a second reading and declaring an emergency motion second any discussion call the roll please mr. Weaven aye mr. James aye mr. LaBarbera aye thank you and uh, next I have the I have three resolutions uh, uh, you had the hearing on the uh, three lighting districts and we'd like to uh, ask the board to uh, approve these resolutions the first one reads a resolution renewing and upgrading to no this isn't correct to oh to LED lights the Richmond Avenue lighting district and dispensing with a second reading motion second any discussion mr. Call Wheatman aye mr. James aye mr. LaBarber aye The next one, resolution renewing and up upgrading to LED lights, the Hemstaff Drive Lighting District and dispensing with a second reading. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. And the third one, a resolution renewing the Macaulay Woods Lighting District and dispensing with a second reading. Motion. Second. Any discussion as to this? And I'll just note for the record, this was the only 
one of these three that in the public hearing there was public comment, which was from the president of the Homeowners Association, from Macaulay Woods, who indicated that they polled their residents, got a somewhat significant response, um, and the majority favored maintaining the existing lighting there as opposed to LED lighting. Of 53 homes, if I recall right, in the neighborhood, they heard back from 21, 14 of whom were in favor of maintaining the existing system. Others were interested in switching to LEDs, pos pos sorry, possibly with modifications, though, of what Duke would provide. So that was the input we got from the public on that. Um, there's no further discussion? Well, wait, I thought, oh, I sorry. thought we were going to go um, with Ed Price and uh, stay with the current we are. We are. That, that we was are the recommendation that. that Mr. Price, the HOA president, okay, made. So that's in here? No, the, you haven't seen this one yet. Okay. Yeah. So this one, okay. But, actually, you just read it, didn't you? You just read it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you did. did. Sorry. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Right. So any further discussion right. as to that? All right. Call the roll. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. Jane. Aye. Mr. LaVarra. Aye. No, if you look at the title of this one, it does not include LED. Right, this one's okay. different than okay. the others, yeah. So. Okay. You received last week, I believe, the August financial package. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple highlights. Uh, this is through August, which is eight months out of 12, or 67% of the year is gone on a run rate. Um, we have collected just over 100% of our projected revenue for the year. So we're obviously going to beat the revenue line uh, from what was originally budgeted. Um, we have spent 56.4% of the budget, which is obviously be below the 67% run rate. So that's good news. Um, the TIFs uh, have brought in about 7% more than budget year to date. And the JEDs that we explored uh, in the JED meetings earlier this afternoon, uh, uh, all together, uh, the township's revenue is up 2.7% across the four JEDs. That's with three JEDs being up and one JED being down. Uh, the most of the uh, appropriation or spending lines are within the 67% uh, run rate, if you will, except uh, some areas of the fire department. So we're watching those carefully. Most of it is associated with salaries and benefits. I'm not sure what uh, uh, what exact moves we could make to try to bring that back into line. But every just about everywhere else, we're in in uh, decent shape. So overall, I would say that the, uh, the picture for the year is in a, a positive position where we look to be bringing in more money than we thought and spending less than we thought, and that's a good thing. Any the, questions about the finances? Is the bringing in more money in part due to CARES Act money coming in, or is it just up overall nonetheless from tax revenues also? Tax revenues are up also. Yeah. Um, and so even if you even if you took out uh, the money that would have come in as like the first part of that ARP money is a million bucks even if you take that out we would be not a hundred percent but very close mm. okay any questions from Mr. Warwick about this from anyone all right thank you what else have you got there is a letter in your packet um, a proposed letter from the Port Authority that they wanted me to sign and the reason is they believe they are close to a deal to uh, purchase the, uh, the Drake and the Carousel properties. Um, the, the deal would be funded by the county. Um, they claim that even using the county money, there, there wouldn't be restrictions. I don't know about that, but that's what they told me. They thought it was important that a letter like this, and we, we can make we can change the letter any way we want, obviously. Uh, but I think Scott Larmer's already given them a letter. Uh, Redding has given a letter, and um, um, I think uh, uh, City of Cincinnati also. 
and uh, they had asked us to since we're part of that whole group down there if we wouldn't indicate to Mr. Aludo that we are okay with the port um, proceeding with trying to purchase that property. Is this in an effort to, se to secure the funds from the county? Is that Yes. I've got a problem with portions of this letter. I'm all for the port trying to help rehabilitate the properties and help finance moving it forward through private enterprise in some way and having a coordinating role in that. And maybe I'm nitpicking the wording of some of this, but in the second paragraph of the letter, it says, we support the port's efforts to put these properties into the public control so the most appropriate development can take place moving forward. And we're not saying temporarily or anything of the sort there. And I certainly don't want to end up uh, having us treated like the city of Cincinnati and the county got treated with the FC stadium with the port suddenly owning it and leasing it back to someone and suddenly it's not a taxable property anymore um, I don't expect they're looking to do something like that but I don't want to encourage that through a letter that might suggest we're in favor of that I'm happy to suggest we're you know happy to cooperate with them and moving the property along and in making that happen though so that, that's my thought as to this anyway I think that um, we ought to consider adding uh, uh, that we support the uh, ports, the, the public control, um, interim public control to move ahead with the future development. Maybe I think he's looking for private development, right? Yeah, I, I think it needs to be privately owned private development. Okay. So not with what, strings what? attached like they say they're not interested in putting in there, but I'll believe that when I see it. So why don't you just say put these properties into the temporary control of the public so the most appropriate private development private development can take place moving forward. Yeah. Or simply in the port's efforts to shepherd these properties into you know, private development and private ownership. Okay. Any thoughts from you two about that? And I would also like to add that the port uh, pledges, promises, I don't know what the right word would be, uh, to uh, include the uh, township in all discussions about the development of the properties. That's, that's pretty critical under the circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. We are the majority owner of the property up there, so that would definitely be important that we have that in that language in there. Yeah. Okay, can we get a motion that would allow me to make these changes and go ahead and send the letter, trusting me to do it right, so, or are we gonna have to convene again? And they wanted the letter last week. I, I don't really don't care, but. I, I, I'm happy to go ahead as in the manner you said. I, I'll move that uh, we instruct the township administrator to modify the letter with the sentiments expressed by the board in tonight's meeting and then proceed to send it himself without need for further board approval. And I'll second that, but I want to just hear what you, what you, the changes you made, if you could read them to us. Okay. On the, uh, the one sentence, to support the port's efforts to put these properties into um, temporary public control to uh, choose the most appropriate private development actually I'm not sure I like that <laughs> I don't either yeah I want just foster private development maybe. yeah well, okay foster or shepherd yeah. the project something like that right. yeah I don't want so, them owning it ever <laughs> well they will own it well yeah they're gonna own it. they're, they're gonna, gonna own it not permanently yeah yeah if, if the port owns it it is public property and it is not taxable at that point there may be a jeds right. there and we make money off of that but well yeah, if they temporarily yeah. own it fine that's but, all that, that's yeah. all they're going to do is temporarily own it. yeah they're going to use county funds to acquire the property and they're going to temporarily own it until private development takes place so into temporary public control until what, how do you want to say that uh, I don't know. I also don't want to micromanage the letter, even though I brought this up in the first well, place. Well, I mean, we should be comfortable with it. I don't. Yeah. We, I think we all know what we want to 
what the point so, is. Okay, yeah, okay. So okay. Just uh, to foster private develop, foster future private development. I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not committing to anything through this yeah. anyway. We're just yeah. saying the key is the yeah. key is not to, co to commit to anything in this letter, other than we support their their position to yeah. uh, to help us in the Reading Road corridor with this plated property. Right. And, and on the second item, the port agrees uh, to include the township in any and all discussions having to do with the resale and development of these properties. That's good. Where'd you put that, Rick? Yeah, we're I'm going to add that sentence at the end. Yeah, at the so end the of second the paragraph second or? paragraph. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm good with it. I think they agree. We we expect they will agree, or it will be a condition that they agree. They're not actually signing off on this as an agreement. Well, right. We got more miles to go on this yeah. if they they yeah. need get financed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I will make those changes and send them their letter. And you know, like I say, there'll be other things. If the if the county does say they're going to fund it, then we want to see. We want to see that document. We want to see what restrictions are on there that they said wouldn't be on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you also send us a copy of the letter? Yes. Complete? Do we have a motion? We, we do, and then we had some discussion, but we didn't vote on it yet. Okay, Mr. Weedman. So, so, so I, guess, oh. I guess we need a motion yeah, to amend, amend the existing oh, okay. letter, yeah, sorry. which I'll make. Yeah, let's just start it. Yeah, yeah. Let, I, let me just I withdraw my motion. How's okay. that? Let's start it. Okay. Let's just make a motion to approve the modified letter as written. Second. That Mr. Works. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Barber. Aye. Okay. And in your packet, we have uh, some large purchase orders. Um, uh, the two biggest ones are to, uh, well, pay the Cincinnati School District uh, out of TIFs. And uh, the other one is that uh, moving of the, uh, the pass-through of funds in the collection to uh, uh, U.S. Bank, which handles the, the bonds there. The rest of them are just increases well three of them are just increases in uh, uh, appropriations for everyday stuff and the other one is this blue lamb erectors that Tracy mentioned earlier and uh, uh, once again we will be we, we have filed an insurance claim motion to approve purchase orders over 5,000 second and I just note it's purchase order 613, 614, 617, 619, 624, and 631. Very good. Any further discussion as to this? We call the roll. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. And Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. And that is all I have. All right. I do I do have the uh, fiscal officers uh, items if you'd like me to yes please do uh, the cash receipts uh, and the the cash receipts that get reported are since the last trustee meeting so any cash that's come in since the last meeting and this meeting and it's hundred and twenty three thousand dollars eighty seven hundred three thousand eighty seven and sixty eight cents and disbursements disbursements this evening <coughs> are seven hundred ninety five thousand eight seventy seven and fifteen cents motion to approve second Call mr weedman aye mr james aye mr labarbera aye all right uh trustee comments uh i just have i just have one comment uh, i want to thank tracy and his staff for uh the great job they did in uh, repl sidewalk replacement in uh, bishop's gate i got multiple people uh, uh thanking me for that so uh i want to pass on those thanks to the crew so they did a great job that's, so. that's all i am mr labarbo yeah, thank tracy and there are a couple of things that i went to them problems with uh, streets different streets and you responded and steve responded very quickly 
Friday night, we mentioned that uh, the park, final music in the park, Missy Warner Band, the Grounded Coffee Truck, the effectual Uh, actually, I had one other item we should have brought up under the administrator session, by the way, before I comment, and that is our November meeting is on election day evening, which is probably inconvenient for some of the people in this room. I think we skipped it that, actually. Mm -hmm. did, did we already we, do that? Did, we deleted that one, didn't we? We didn't, but we'll address it next meeting, or, or we can okay. do it now. I, I think we did that for the July, maybe the July 4th, we did also the, for the we election did. day. Did we already? Uh, I think okay. we did. You can go back and look, but I, I believe yeah. we already did. If not, we'll do that in the next meeting. I okay. just want to make sure we don't let that fall through the cracks. Right. The We're going to prepare for it to work yeah. around it. So. Okay. Uh, so, I, I'll just note for the public, it's election silly season. You're going to hear all kinds of stuff in the next few months from people running for office of all kinds in the township and school boards and so on. Check out what you hear, obviously, and ask your elected officials when you hear something that they've done or that they've said uh, or supposedly said. And go back and verify. Don't believe everything you're told. Um, anyway, we have uh, that, that's all I've got here. So uh, announcement changes. Zoning Commission meeting is September 30th, as Mr. Miller noted, at 6 p.m. Check our calendar for other events, and we have an executive session here on the agenda. I move we adjourn into executive session with Law Director Deepak Desai as permitted by Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22 to discuss pending and imminent litigation. Motion or second rather. Who's invited? Uh, we need to vote first. Second. second. Mr. Weaveman? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. All right. And do we need Mr. Miller? Kellums, Mr. Miller, Mr. Kellums, and Mr. Wark. All right, and trustees, of course. So, for the record, it is 8:36, 8:36 p.m., and we are adjourning into executive session.
Oh, don't tell us. I'm taping it. <laughs> no spoilers. They're going to be there, Jim. They're going to be there. Against the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> you know how that's going to go. Hey, we beat them one game. Did you get that apartment yeah, picture did. from a drone? But with, no um, well, you know, anything can happen in this one game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's yeah all those aerials are, are our drone. <coughs> all right, are we all back? Yeah. Yeah. Elliot, we good? Yeah. All right. We are back from executive session. It is 9.33 p.m. on Tuesday, September 21st. Mr. Warwick, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Weedman. Present. Mr. James. Here. Mr. LaBarbera. Here. Any further business? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to pursue abatement of violations at 4106 Judd through the Hamilton County Courts. And there is a second. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. We are adjourned at 9.34 p.m. on Tuesday, September 21st. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, sir.